Right, so a story that's amused me no end this week, at any rate, is a half-witted attack, frankly, by some Labour figures on the Green Party in an attempt to smear them as perhaps not as green as they make themselves out to be, as a soda farm in Kent has been refused planning permission. Now, if you just read the headline to this story, as so many of social, or so many on social media have clearly done, it very much implies that the council in question, which is focused on a high district council, has refused the planning permission because it is Green Party run, and therefore there's a whiff of a scandal in the air, a bit of nimbyism. But actually, it's nothing of the sort. It's actually incredibly misleading. And well, some people who have let their factionalism and their desperation for a gotcha on the Greens from within the Labour Party get the better of them, and well, they deserve to get the rinsing they've got from some quarters. Right, so Folkestone and High District Council in Kent has been the source of a, frankly, a non-story, but given it has been picked up by some not so insignificant Labour figures, it has, I think, highlighted Labour's desperation to get one over the, on the Greens at the moment, who are clearly taking votes from them. But when you dig into the story itself, you realise that actually it's Labour it blows them up in the face of. The Kent Online story, as this headline has come from, is actually titled Huge Solar Farm at Postling near Folkestone Rejected by Council. And the story concerns one of those large solar farms I'm sure most of us have seen erected across farmland. And in this case, it was a 55-acre planned solar array, that's roughly the size of 30 football pitches, and would have the capacity to supply clean, green energy to some 5,000 homes. However, before you click on the article, as it appears on social media, the actual title of it isn't presented to you as that in the thumbnail. Instead, the article is introduced as Kent's Green Council Rejects Plans for Huge Solar Farm. Now, sure, it is a Green Council, but was it the Green Councillors that actually rejected it? Judging by the number of people who didn't read past that title in the thumbnail, it's enough to have people sneering at the Greens themselves over this, and certain Labour figures who definitely know better than to read just such a headline and judge the entire story on that, have taken full advantage. Now, the one name that jumped out to me on this when it came across my screen was Mike Katz, who you might be familiar with. He's usually running around accusing the left of being racist, uh, as one of Starmer's go-to anti-Semitism judges involved with the Jewish Labour movement, where you need neither be Jewish nor in Labour to actually be a part of, and who were scathingly criticised in the Ford report for their anti-Semitism anti training being poor, let's just say. But let it never be said he's not a loyal Labour sycophant himself, though, as he saw this article and he had to quote tweet it. And he said, Ladies and gents, the progressive Green Party in action. Huge solar farm at Postling near Folkestone rejected by council. Newham Borough Council's Labour right-winger Joshua Garfield eagerly backed Katz's tweet, quoting it and saying, The Greens are not green. They are nimby, provincial, and want to strangle Britain's economy. We'd never reach net zero with their policies. And there are numerous other examples from other Labour councillors and figures besides. I suppose you'd better actually look at what actually happened then, in which case, if we're going to set all of this into context. Now, this was obviously a planning decision, and these decisions are made by the District Council's planning committee members. It doesn't actually matter if the majority of councillors on the whole council might be green, as they are in this case. In this case, they're the largest party, but run as a minority, I think. But what does matter is the makeup of councillors who happen to be on the planning committee itself, and are therefore responsible for voting on planning matters. And they're guided by the advice of a planning officer or officers, who are the ones who will, I think it's fair to say, be most familiar with planning rules and regs, bearing in mind that councillors come from all walks of life and are elected to their positions, and therefore the planning officer's recommendations carry a reasonable amount of weight. Certainly you defer to their wisdom, shall we say. Planning officers, incidentally, are found at district or borough or county council levels, whatever the local administration system is. Town and parish councils don't. They make recommendations themselves on planning applications to those larger councils. So their recommendations are advisory and not decision making. Uh, I happen to be a green councillor myself on a town council planning committee at that. And I don't think these distinctions are often well enough known about. But it's worth dropping that in for information purposes. Anyway, Folkestone and Hive District Council Planning Committee consists, despite the Greens being the largest party when you consider the whole council, are not the largest representation on the planning committee. Of the 12 councillors on their planning committee, four are green, 
Four are Labour, if you include the Labour and Cooperative members, who are often counted separately for some reason. Two Tories, one Lib Dem and one Independent. So it's a mixed bag, with no one party having any significant influence over decisions. And that's good for democracy, you would think. But also shows that no matter what the decision on whatever planning planning application comes before them, no one party can actually ever be blamed for the decision going one way or the other, since it is a smaller representative body of councillors acting on behalf of the whole council on planning matters. Now, when it comes to making these decisions, the vote essentially often comes down to that planning officer's recommendation. And in this instance, the planning officer had recommended refusal. And bear in mind their judgment has to be justified. They have to show why they've come to that conclusion based on the rules and regs, as I've said. And in this instance, the planning officer's recommendation well, or conclusion was that the proposals would result in a detrimental change to the quality of the strategic landscape, failing to conserve and enhance the character of the North Downs national landscape. This would result in significant harm to the visual character of the area, and thus impact on the enjoyment of the area by receptors using the local public rights of way. The proposed mitigation is insufficient to overcome these harms. So that was their view. Essentially, the planning officer decided that the proposal contravened local and national planning policy, and although these can be set aside if the development warrants it, and if a strong enough case to do that can be provided, the fact this development lay within an area of outstanding national beauty counted against it, and would be visible from all manner of vantage points meant in the opinion of the planning officer, this was not uh, dis demonstrably mitigatable, if that's such a word. So the councillors on the planning committee were either going to vote for the planning officer's recommendations or against them. They don't have to agree with his decisions or their decisions. The mitigations mentioned in the application might sway them enough to disagree with the planning officer. But the way the media have spun this story has been to imply that anyone who voted this proposal down voted against the planning officer and is therefore anti-environment instead of actually having just gone along with the planning officer's planning recommendation and voted accordingly. And because they've made a thing of this being a green council, people not actually reading the story will think green council blocked solar farm and certainly that narrative labour figures are exploiting. So what did happen then, Damo? Well, the application was voted down. The planning officer's recommendations therefore were supported by seven votes to four. One of the Lib Dem councillors was absent on this day, so there were only 11 councillors in attendance out of the 12 on this planning committee night. Of the four councillors who supported the application though, who backed the solar farm application in spite of the planning officer's recommendations, three of them were Greens. The fourth was one of the Labour councillors. So actually, when you break it down, the ones who opposed this development, whether you agree with it or not, consisted of three Labour, two Tories, one Independent, one Green and one Lib Dem. So to say the Greens blocked this solar farm because they are the largest party on the council is therefore misleading and dishonest. And to say they did so on the planning committee is also misleading and dishonest because three quarters of them on that committee actually supported the application for the solar farm. That this is Labour attacking the Greens for blocking a solar farm when actually a majority of their councillors on this committee actually blocked it just goes to show how prepared they are to be deceitful in order to get ahead. But the biggest laugh is that they squeal about policy-based planning decisions being important all the time. Yet when one happens, as has happened here, they complain about it, even when actually it was their own councillors following that. It's absolutely shameless performative politics when you drill down into it that deserves nothing but derision and contempt. I mean, this is the best they can do. This is the desperation on show from Labour to get one over on the Green Party right now. It really just goes to show why a vote for the Greens can never be a vo wasted vote. And of course, it isn't just Labour councillors and local politics levels and such shamelessness is on show at. It wasn't that long ago that Keir Starmer himself went to Bristol and he went there and he pretty much gave the people their every reason to vote Green and not Labour. Not least of which in Bristol Central, the Green Party co-leader Carla Denyer is taking on the awful Starmeroid Thangam debonair in a bid to secure the Green's second MP. I'll hopefully catch you on the next bid. Cheers, folks.